Alright, what's going on guys? It's your boy, Scootman, Skeletal, or Jame. We're doing another tier list today. Now, I was just going to do adventures, but I wanted to do a bigger one. So we're going to be doing what I'm calling encounters. So basically, any anything that's interactive and is not a status station is on this list. So basically, the interactive stuff from Adventures. So, I've already thought about this beforehand quite a bit, so it's it's gonna be kinda straight to the point. So, we're, I'm, I'm just gonna immediately, immediately, you can see the pre-planning pre, pre here, chuck these three down into F. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm doing that. That's because these really, really I shouldn't even put these on the list, but they kinda fall in with these because they are parts of adventures and they really still are kind of encounters but all they do is just talk and give you the rune so if you want to you can just completely take these out of the list just ignore this section entirely and then we'll move on to the actual real ones let me put Gwen down at the bottom because <laughs> she she takes way too long uh I, I don't know how many of you have actually done the Duel Master adventure, but dear lord, she talks forever. And jeez, they, they made her talk way, 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 way too much. Glitter Tail is just kind of boring, and then put Candace up because you get to hear the bop, and you get to just blast it throughout the entire building, which is fun. So, yeah, that's going to do it for F tier, guys. F tier, let's go. We love F tier. All right, so now we're going to do uh, D tier. And this is just going to be the mini games, basically, from, uh, from Myrtle and then whatever other location. Uh, what order am I going to put these in? Okay, we're going to put, we're going to do Old Man. We're going to do Esmeralda. Zenort just gets bonus points just because he's such an interesting part of uh, the game's history. Uh, Esmeralda, I'm just putting lower because I, th I think the minigame goes by kind of quick if you're just doing it in free play. I don't know how long it lasts. It can be fun, but eh. Zenort, it's just Zenort. What, what else do I have to say? And then Old Man of the Stone is above them all because... I think his mechanic is actually pretty fun. Uh, if you don't know how his minigame works, there is a 3x3 three three tile on the floor. And it's basically silver before silver was a thing. Uh, it's it's Dance Dance Revolution, if you're really asking, but at a slower pace. So, I think that's fun. This mechanic was never really revisited ever again with like physical movement in an encounter. So, I, I think he's fun. I think it's a, I think it's a cool mini game. And then Esmeralda is just kind of spam casting. I'm sure, Zenort's the same thing, but you know, it, it's Zenort. All right, moving on to C tier, boys. C tier. Now, what's gonna, what's gonna be in C tier? What do you think's gonna be in C tier? I'll tell you what's gonna be in C tier. These are the ones I like to refer as uh, the sp the spam encounters. These four are, in my eyes, just kind of a reskin of each other. You don't select a rune. You just stand there in the room and then cast at a screen. Goblin King and Ursa Major are higher up because I think Ursa Major is a fun adventure. Uh, the the chest for the amulet will always be one of my favorite effects. I think it's just a great example of the the fun of Creative Kingdoms and their like design and their their creativity with quests and all that that i think that's like peak peak them and then goblin king it's just goblin king classic it's, pixie mm, it's, it's the most poo poo of the four and then just just the crypt you know it's it's uh, i don't know a whole lot about this adventure because i never got to do it when i went to myrtle but the, the, these two have been around f like forever but yet there's like no footage of them it's it's weird. There's really no footage of Ursa Major either, unless I just haven't watched all of the freaking Family Channel videos from Great Wolf Lodge. But I don't know. The best video I've seen was the one in um, Acid's wa uh, walkthrough video at Poconos that they posted recently. But that's the first time I've seen like the Ursa Major all the way through. And I, I think it's cool. 
Uh, I love the the stuff with like, like the star magic between um, Amora and Candace, and then they continue with Ursa Major. Like he's literally the constellation. But anyways, that does it for C tier. They're literally just kind of the same thing, maybe a little bit different and just reskinned. Yeah, that's gonna do it for uh, that's gonna do it for C tier. Let's go, boys. All right, uh, B tier. Uh, it's just gonna be Kalo by himself. Now, uh, I don't know how many people have played MQO. I don't, I don't know why, but as a kid, me and my sister played the ever-living crap out of MQO. We really ate up anything Magic Quest we could get our hands on. Kalo, he's a fun fight, but the only reason why he kind of suffers is because he is limited to the computer. If he was a in-person fight, I'm sure he would be tons of fun. But the fact that it's only mouse on a screen, uh, that kind of ruins it for me. So I wish there was some kind of playable version of him with a wand in person, but then again that would ruin the whole point of what he was. He was just the boss fight in chapter one. Because he, he's essentially just a Charlock or a Winterra fight. You learn the pattern, you do the pattern, until you win. And that's about it. As much as I think Kalo is cool, he suffers for that reason. Of being just on a computer. So if he was in person, I would even put him maybe up a tier. And maybe really I should be putting him down a tier. But since these four are essentially just the same thing, and he is a fully f like fleshed out fight and not just a mini game and an adventure, he he kinda sits in this weird spot. Like I can't put him lower and I can't put him higher in my mind. Maybe you guys will put him down in C tier. But this is my tier list. If you want to make a tier list I highly encourage you to. I would love to see that. I don't think anybody else has done one yet. So if you want to be the first, be my guest. I, I love, I love, I love this community. I love the game. It's all about the magic quest, baby. Love the magic. So yeah, that's B tier. Just Kalo by himself. All right, that's B tier. Let's move on to A tier. Uh, you probably already know. Uh, we've got, we've got the, we've got the dragon siblings. Charlock and Winterra. Now you're probably wondering, Jane, maybe you're not. Maybe you can already see or like understand where I'm going to go with this. But if you're wondering, Jane, why are you putting two very vastly different adventures on the same tier? Well, in my mind, they can kind of equal each other out. I've really had to think, like, put thought into this. I've done this multiple times. Maybe I should bump Winterra down a tier. Maybe I should put Charlock up a tier. I can't decide. Because just like with Kalo, it feels wrong to put him down with these guys. And it, it feels wrong to bump Charlock up with who's going to go in S tier. And just leave Winterra by herself. I don't know. I think they might just kind of equal each other out. So with Charlock, it depends on where you're playing. If you were playing at a Mega Kingdom location like Myrtle or Tokyo Dome or whatever the big ones were, where it wasn't just as easy as dragon painting. Bam, you can fight him now. Uh, you would have to go get the scrolls, which uh, threw in an extra rune into Charlock's adventure. You had, to have, you had to have reveal, and reveal was used to reveal the, the code on the scrolls, and then you would go to the portal, and then you could fight him. So that, that made the adventure longer. Now, I don't know what the time span of finding those scrolls in a larger location would be like, but I would imagine it's somewhat equaled out to what you have to do for Winterra. Now, I don't know what Winterra would have been like at a Mega Kingdom location either, since I have only done Ice Dragon stuff at Pigeon Forge. And it's not too bad. It, it's I have a love-hate relationship with the Master Magi stuff, or just the Ice Dragon Saga content. Part of me likes the quest and what you have to do to start the adventure. And then sometimes it's just... I think it's a bit too much. Because when Terra gives you 3,000 XP, 2,000 gold, and then Charla gives you 2,500 gold. So I don't really know what getting all the scrolls would have equaled out to at Myrtle compared to crafting the arrow, the shield, for Winterra at Myrtle. Watching my own freaking video here. So it, apparently it takes about 10, 
wow, it really doesn't take all that long. It takes about five to six minutes to get the shield and arrow crafted for Winterra at Pigeon Forge. So I don't know. They really equal each other out. I was going to put Charlock in S just because it's Charlock. It's classic. It's He is like the poster boy of the whole game, essentially. Like every ad you see for the game, he's there. He, he's really what like you do once you've done everything. You just kind of grind him out, see however high you get on leaderboards. Winterra just doesn't really... It's really not all that worth it, unless you really want to do XP. You know, if you just want to get higher up faster, you do Charlock, because it's, it's literally, it literally takes four minutes compared to ten minutes for Winterra as the whole adventure. So that's eighth tier. Let's move on to the big boys. On S tier, that's going to be Silver and Xavier. Essentially, Silver is just Old Man in the Stone and Heroic Unicorn, which I think did kind of the same memory game mechanic. Ups the stakes by a ton. But <laughs> I don't really know how else to explain it. But Silver is... I think it's a lot of fun. One, it was a bonus, an exclusive thing that you could unlock by doing Magic Quest Online. Uh, it was your reward for buying Magic Quest Online, and it's basically a DLC type thing. So not only for like 15 bucks, you could buy the game, go home, maybe have fun with it, I don't know. I had fun with it as a kid, I don't really know how much uh, the gameplay translates to video game. I don't know if it translates well at all, if I remember or not. But, in my mind, it's worth it to put the time into the game, because one, you met Lokri and Willow, and I think the, their cutscenes are really fun. Uh, you get to experience Kalo. I think that's a cool fight. Not only that, but then when you come back to a real location, you would have Silver Dragon as your reward. You would come back, and as soon as you go to a quest tree, you would get the cutscene with Willow and Lokri, like, ah, holy sh... Silver Dragon coming through the portal. Wow. Silver Dragon is so much fun. It is like the highest stakes that you could ever experience in the game. And the rewards are pretty nuts. I don't know what he gives you experience wise, but he gives you 3k gold. And if you're good at it and you're a leaderboards person, uh, you could do him in as much time as Charlock. If you don't get the shield, because if you're good, you don't need it. And then you just go straight to the fight, run through it first try. You get more gold than a, it's about the same time as Charlock, maybe a little bit slower. If you're good, it's pretty fast. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's intense. You got to be really fast. And if you get good at it, like I said, it'll just rocket you through the leaderboards. It is insane. And then plus the, the whoever they got to voice act, Silver Dragon, he is incredible. A ton of fun. On to the man himself, Xavier. Do I, do I really have to explain it? Do I really have to explain it? The most hyped up thing in the game, essentially. Uh, it, it gives you morphs instead of just a rune or something like that. You have to use the clan morphs of Krieger and Wald and whoever, however you pronounce the other ones. The morphs that you've met through MQO and use their powers represent, representing the clan to counter whatever Xavier throws at you now. Well, a whole lot of them still don't really make sense to me. Some of them make sense, like the vines. You attack with warrior and chop them up with sword. That's cool. This is your first time actually dueling another magi. Like, nothing like this has happened before. So it's cool to see someone maybe more skillful or just as skillful as you fighting in one-to-one -one combat, if you will. I have to mention Andrew's absolutely mind-blowing performance what he does with the character of xavier is just it leaves me speechless to this day even re-watching the same clips i don't know how many years later he he was a man of talent as a guy who used to be in theater i admire his work very much so big rest in peace to my man andrew you will be missed but he, he's the first legit interactive, like, back-and-forth fight with a, a human actor. Like I said, do I really need to explain why he is at the top of the list? 
he is so much fun. Every once in a while, I'll go back and just play it if I'm bored. Mainly because it's the only one that I can play without being at a location. But I just love this fight. Just the the spells and all that. They just it's not just ice, ice arrow, fire, fire arrow. It's it's a whole bunch of stuff. Like he summons the skeleton dudes at you, the, the ghosts, and then wrap them up in vines, and then you just shock the ever living poo poo out of the man. Anyways, this is the tier list. I thought about it long and hard. This is it. I just bumped my mic. Uh, let me know if you disagree or anything like that in the comments. I'm sure I'm going to get hell in Discord if uh, anything about this is controversial. But, you know, it's my opinion. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, if, if you feel so, like I said, if you feel so entitled to your opinion, you make a video. You make a tier list. I would watch it. I would leave a like. And all of that. Well, I don't know. Y'all could just be memeing and you put Znort like all the way up in A. I know somebody that would put Znort in A or S even. But I don't know. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And whatever I do next, I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye. Have a good one. Happy question. Stop staring and get moving, Magi. Objects don't enchant themselves.